Welcome back. Last time we learned about what a derivative is using the tangent line problem and then creating a limit definition for that derivative. And finding a derivative from that limit process is quite lengthy and honestly you don't want to have to do that every time you take a derivative. So thankfully we have some very nice shortcuts that we can use to take derivatives pretty quick and it's very simple. So this whole lesson is just going to be focused on these basic rules and you'll see just how easy these really are. In fact, this is probably one of the best parts of calculus because it's really not too difficult. So let's look at our first rule here, which is the constant rule. And the constant rule says that when we take a derivative of a constant, we get zero. So for example, if we took the derivative of seven, that would be equal to zero because seven is a constant. There's no variables in that expression. It's just seven. So a derivative of seven is just zero. Next is our power rule. And our power rule says that if we take a derivative of a variable such as x to a power n, we multiply that n by that variable x and then we subtract one from that exponent n. And so an example of this would be if we were to take the derivative of x to the fourth this would be equal to this four multiplied by this x, so we'll have four times x, and then we subtract one from our exponent four, so we'd have four minus one. And so then this we could simplify, and we would say that this is equal to four x to the third power, and then that would be the derivative of x to the fourth, because I just subtracted one from the exponent here. So these are the two most basic derivative rules, but there are a few more that you have to learn here in the very beginning. Next we have the constant multiple rule, and this one says that when you have a constant multiplied by some function that you're taking a derivative of, meaning you are taking a derivative of both of these, you can rewrite this as that constant times the derivative of just the function. So it doesn't matter what this constant is that's being multiplied by your function, it's still going to be multiplied by whatever the derivative of that function is. So for example, if I wanted to take the derivative of the function 2x squared, well, you would agree that our constant here is two and our function here is x squared. We could say that f of x equals x squared. Well, then we'd have our constant and our function. So what we could do by this rule is rewrite this as two times the derivative of x squared. And then we can go through this accordingly. So we could say that this is equal to two times and then we can use our power rule from before. So we'd multiply two times our x, so I'd have another two, and then times x, and then we would subtract one from our exponent, so two minus one would be one, and so then we can simplify this to four x, and that would be our derivative in this case for this function. And so while it's nice to know this rule, it's actually not used as explicitly as I used it right here when we usually take derivatives. When we take a derivative of a function that requires a power rule, because of this idea where it's just going to be multiplied by our actual derivative, we don't even bother to pull it out. We just go directly from this step to this step. So what I mean is we would just say that this is equal to that 2 times the power of 2 we're bringing down, so times 2 then times our x, and then we subtract that one from our exponent, and then we still get the same answer of four x. So we can actually skip this whole step, but it's still important to show you why we can kind of skip that step, because that constant doesn't actually change the derivative process, we just multiply it by our derivative. And then our last set of rules that we're going to learn in this lesson are the sum and difference rules. And these say that when we take a derivative of two functions added or subtracted together, this is going to be equal to the derivative of each of these separately added or subtracted together. So for example, if f of x equaled three and g of x equaled x squared, well then if we took the derivative of those two functions added together, we'd have three plus x squared, this would be equal to the derivative of each of these separately. So we'd have the derivative of three plus the derivative of x squared and then we could take a derivative of each of these separately and add them. So the derivative of three would be zero because the derivative of a constant like three is always zero, so we'd have zero, and then we'd add it to our derivative of x squared, which is going to be this two times x, so two times x, and then one subtracted from the exponent. Again, that's our power rule. So then we would have one in our exponent. Then we could simplify and we could see that this is zero plus two x, so it would be equal to two x. 
And then if we were to do subtraction or find the difference, we would have the derivative of 3 minus x squared. And in the same way, we could take the derivative of 3 minus the derivative of x squared. Now we already took the derivative of each of these parts, right? We found that it was 0 and 2x. So now we can just subtract those rather than add them. So this would be equal to 0 minus 2x, which would be equal to negative 2x. So that is how we use the sum and difference rules. Now, just like the previous rule, like the constant multiple rule, we actually don't typically write these steps here. We just go ahead and we take a derivative of each part and skip right over to this step. So now you know when you see terms that are added together or subtracted together, you can actually just take the derivative of each of those parts separately and either add or subtract them respectively. So now let's look at some examples where we use all these different rules so you really get the idea of how they all work. So let's look at the derivative of x, just x. What is this going to be equal to? Well, the power of x is technically 1. So if we multiplied x by that power of 1, we would have 1 times x. And then we need to subtract 1 from our exponent, right? We're using our power rule here. Whenever we are taking a derivative of just a single variable, no matter what power it is to, we're going to be using that power rule. But anyway, back to our exponent here. If we subtract 1 from the exponent, we are going to get 1 minus 1. And so this will be equal to just x to the 0 power, right? Because 1 times x is just x. And then this x has 1 minus 1 in the exponent, so we're left with 0. And remember that anything to the 0 power is actually equal to 1. So in this case, the derivative of just x to the first power is 1. And so this is actually a nice result because if you ever see a term such as 7x or 8x, you know that when you take a derivative, this x is just going to be 1 when you take a derivative. So really, the derivative of each of these terms is just going to be 7 times 1, which is going to be equal to 7. And this is going to be 8 times 1, which will equal 8. So you know that when you see a variable raised to the first power and a constant, that the derivative of that is just going to be that constant, which is a very nice little quick trick about taking derivatives. Well, let's look at another example. Next, let's take the derivative of 1 over x. How are we going to go about this one? Well, one of the tricks with derivatives is being able to rewrite your expression in a way that is more recognizable to you to use one of the rules. So right now in this current state, I don't know what kind of rule to use. I don't really see a power for my x. Well, let's rewrite it as this. So we'll have the derivative. And remember that you can express a variable in the denominator of a fraction with a negative exponent. So we could say that this is equal to x to the negative first power because this x is only raised to one power, but it's in the denominator. So we can bring this up to the top by making that exponent negative. And now we have an exponent or a power that we can use with our power rule. So I could say that this is equal to that negative one, which is the power, times x, and then subtract one from our exponent, which is negative one. And then we can reduce, and we'll have negative x to the negative two power, because negative one minus one is negative 2. So now we're almost done. We just want to move that x to the negative 2 power back into the denominator so that it has a positive power. So this is going to be equal to negative 1 divided by x squared. So now let's look at the derivative of the square root of x. Well, here's another one where I'm not really sure where my power is. How do I take a derivative of a square root function? It's actually just like the previous problem where if you know how to rewrite it in a way that it does have a power, you can take a derivative fairly easily. So what do we know about the square root function? We know that it is the same as taking a value to the one half power. So we could rewrite this as the derivative of x to the one half power. Just like taking the cube root of a function is taking it to the one third power, or the fourth root is taking it to the one fourth power, it's all connected in that way. So we can now use our power rule. We can write that this is equal to one half times x and then one half minus one. And then this will be equal to one half x and then one half minus one is negative one half. So we'll have negative one half. And then this would be equal to 1 divided by 2 times x to the positive 1 half power because we moved that x down to the denominator, so the power is now positive. And then we know that the 1 half power is the square root, so we can rewrite this one more time to be 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And that would be the derivative of the square root of x. So 
A lot of times when you're taking derivatives, one of the best tips to keep in mind is just to rewrite your function in a way that you can take a derivative of it, or a way that you know to take a derivative using that power rule. Eventually you get to a point where you won't even think about doing this, you'll just see the square root of x and you go, oh, okay, I can just use that as a one-half power. But for now, it is very helpful to understand these concepts by rewriting your functions. So let's look at a few more derivatives yet. How about the derivative of x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x squared? Well, this is going to use two of our rules. First, we know we're going to be using our power rule for sure, but we also have multiple functions added together. So we can take each of these functions' derivatives individually and add them. So that's what we're going to do here. So we'll start with x to the fourth. We'll say that this is equal to 4 times x, right? We multiply x by our exponent, and then we subtract 1 from our exponent. Then we can add our next derivative, which would be of x cubed here, and we'll multiply the exponent 3 times x, and then subtract 1 from our exponent. So 3 minus 1. Then we're going to add our next derivative, which would be of x squared. And we'll take our exponent 2, multiply it by x. So we'll have 2 times x. And then subtract 1 from our exponent. So 2 minus 1. So let's simplify. We're going to have 4 times x to the third power plus 3 times x to the second power plus 2 times x to the first power. And then actually we don't typically show the first power, so we can erase that. And then we have our final answer of 4x to the third power plus 3x squared plus 2x. And so we took what looked to be a pretty large function here and we took a derivative of it pretty quickly. Can you even imagine taking a derivative of this using that limit definition, right? We'd be plugging in x plus delta x into each part and there'd be so much expanding, it would take so long to do. So it's really nice to have these rules so that we can get a derivative quickly and easily. So now real quickly, now that we've seen some examples of derivatives, I wanna go over some notation that you may see regarding derivatives. So, so far you have seen me use this d dx form and we've just been putting whatever we're taking a derivative of in those brackets. But now you're probably gonna come across different ways that derivatives are expressed. In fact, you already saw one of them in our previous lesson, which is right here, this f prime notation. When we take a derivative of a function f of x, we denote that derivative with f prime of x. So this would be the derivative function of f of x. And this works for any function, like if you had g of x, the derivative of g of x would be g prime of x. That's how you would write it. And then if you have a function such as maybe y or z, where these are functions of x, right, and not a different variable, if you have y equals, you know, 2x plus 3, that would be a function with y and x. And so if we were to take a derivative of that function y, we could write it as y prime, or we could write it as dy dx, which means we're taking a derivative of the function y with respect to x, which is why it's important that y is a function of x because otherwise this notation doesn't make sense. You can't have dy dx or the derivative of y with respect to x if y is not a function of x. However, for the y prime notation, it doesn't matter what variable y is a function of because you don't actually see that in that notation. It's just y prime, there's no x that's in there. Hopefully that makes sense. And that would be the same for z, right? If we had a function z where z equaled 2x plus 3 or some function of x, we would have z prime as our derivative or dz dx would represent our derivative, which means that we are taking a derivative of z with respect to x. And all that means is that x is the variable that we are taking that derivative of, right? We always have functions that involve x, it seems, and so that's what that means. And you'll see when we get into more derivatives and more problems that these variables will often change depending on the circumstance, which is very common in physics problems where we have different variables going on. But for now, it's good to kind of internalize these different notations for a derivative so you're not taken off guard when you see them pop up somewhere, like in a homework problem or elsewhere. And so just so you can see how these would look in action, here's a quick example where we have the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x, and all the different ways that you would represent the derivative depending on how your x squared function was given. So you can see each of the scenarios 1, 2, and 3 where you have f of x, y, and z, and how the different notations would look for each scenario. Hopefully that makes sense. So finally, let's do a quick practice using one of these notations. We have that we want to find the derivative, or f prime of x, as well as the value of the derivative at x equals 2 for this function, 3 divided by x squared minus 1 8 
times x. So the first thing we want to do is rewrite our derivative in a way that we are able to take the derivative more easily, right? I see that we have powers of x, but this one's in the denominator, and I'm not a big fan of that, so let's pull that up and get a negative exponent, and then we can take our derivative. So I'm going to rewrite our function, so I'm going to write rewrite, and we're going to say that f of x is equal to 3 times x to the negative 2 power, and then we'll subtract our 1 8 x. We don't need to do anything to that. That's good as it is. And so now let's take our derivative. We'll say that f prime of x is equal to 3 multiplied by the exponent, so negative 2, times x, and then our exponent minus 1. Then we'll have a subtraction of 1 8 times power 1 for this x, right, times 1, times x and then 1 minus 1. Now, I already said earlier that we could just take a quick skip when we have a constant in front of an x. It's just going to be the constant. But I did want to show this one more time in case that didn't really click. And also, this right here is a good example of our constant multiple rule, right? We have this 3x to the negative 2 power. We could have pulled this 3 out and then taken a derivative of this by itself and then multiplied by 3, but I decided to do them together by multiplying 3 right by the derivative of x to the negative 2 power right away. So now let's simplify. We'll have that this is equal to negative 6x to the negative 3 power minus 1 8 and then if you remember, x to the 1 minus 1 power would be x to the 0 power, which is just 1, so multiplied by 1. And then we can simplify one more time by taking this negative exponent into the denominator of this term. So we're going to have that this is equal to negative 6 divided by x to the third power minus 1 eighth. So that would be our derivative, our f prime of x, and now we just have to find f prime of 2. So we have our derivative function, so now we just have to plug 2 into it. So we have f prime of 2 is equal to negative 6 over 2 to the third power minus 1 eighth. Remember, we just plug that 2 into anywhere we have an x. So now this is going to be equal to negative 6 divided by 8, because 2 to the third power is 8, minus 1 eighth, and then we will find that our answer is negative 7 eighths. All right, so that's all there is to know about the basic derivative rules. If you want to see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video as well as in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But that's all I have for now, so I will see you next time.